In all labour, there is profit. But idle chatter leads only to poverty. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share some thoughts based on Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. In all labour, there is profit. But idle chatter leads only to poverty. When God created the world, he created man to care for this world that was created. He put everything in our hands and it's our responsibility to maintain it. Now, of course, there are some huge things that God does, but it is in the small things that we have responsibility. That's what Adam and Eve were engaged in, in the garden before sin came. But after sin came, outside the garden, it became much harder. And so we have in the sweat of your brow, you shall eat bread. Still, there was labour required. When we come to the New Testament, the Christian life is described as the work of faith, the labour of love, the patience of hope. We are to work in the present in anticipation of something better in the future. And if we do not engage in our work now, then we do not experience the good that shall follow. In all labour, there is profit. There is a return on the investment of labour that we put in. And God has determined that we must work. So Paul tells Timothy, if a man will not work, neither shall he eat. The church is not to become a welfare state where some people work and other people are lazy. No, everyone is to do the work that is appropriate for them. We are all made equal in the sight of God. We are all created in the image and likeness of God. But our roles are not all equal. Some are masters, some are servants, some are husbands, some are wives, some are teachers, some are students. In the organisation, we all have a place and a role. Now that's not to say that the Prime Minister is intrinsically better than the train driver, because the train driver may become the Prime Minister or a Prime Minister may become a train driver. We have different roles, but intrinsically we are all created in the image of God and we are all equal. And so we cannot be proud within ourselves because we have a particular role. That role we have only because it was given to us. Nevertheless, we need to find out what our role is and be fully engaged in it. In all labour there is profit. But idle chatter leads only to poverty. When we fulfil our role within the system, then the system will provide for us. But if we disengage and just talk about things rather than doing them, the system will not provide for us. Now, modern Western society, trying to have a welfare state, tries to provide for people. So we have Prime Ministers say, by... 2000, there will be no children living in poverty in Australia. There's always been the poor, as Jesus said, among us. It's not within a Prime Minister's power to remove poverty because it's in the individual's power. The individual must take the opportunities that are given there. The individual must find the role that there is for them. And it involves labour finding a job and doing it. It mightn't be a job that you like, but that's where humility comes in. You don't just do the jobs that you like. So the present system falls down because there are plenty of jobs available, but they are jobs that people do not like to do. So nobody wants to do them, except maybe immigrants from overseas who are prepared to work because they see that in all labour there is profit there is a return. Solomon had something else to say about this in the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 9, verse 10, he said, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. The idea is that now is the day of opportunity. 
there's the opportunity to believe in God and walk God's ways, but there is also the opportunity to do something today which will not be available to you tomorrow. And so whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Now, we need to balance this with the proverb that we looked at last time, the previous verse, which says, Do they not go astray who devise evil, but mercy and truth belong to those who devise good? Labor is intrinsically good, but we can use our powers and ability for good or for evil. God always does those things that are good because that's his nature. But we are inclined to do those things that are evil because that is our nature. We must choose between the good and the evil. Part of the evil is to disengage, to not contribute, to not work. But everything that is not maintained falls down. That's the nature of this world that is subject to sin. It is groaning. Yes, we can still see the marvellous wonder of the creation. It keeps ticking over in a most marvellous way. We cut ourselves and we heal. Devastations on the earth, fires destroy, floods destroy, famine destroys, and yet the plants regrow. Animals come back. Life goes on. So we have that struggle evident in nature, which is evident in our own hearts. So the challenge for us is always to find the task that the Lord has given us to do and to pursue godliness rather than seek to satisfy the lust of the flesh. Our proverb is simply encouraging us in all labour there is profit. It doesn't matter what your job is, whether you're the janitor or the CEO. You have a job to do and you need to do it to the best of your ability. Do it with all your might because this is your opportunity to do good. At the end of 1 Corinthians 15 where Paul was discussing the resurrection and that death and sin will ultimately be overcome by the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labour is not in vain in the Lord. Whatever task we do, when we do it in the Lord and for the Lord, there is a reward for it. As the proverb says, there is profit, there is gain, there is a return from the investment. It is in the future, and we don't always get the profit immediately. In the farming area, you have to go out and plough the field, and then you sow the field, and then you must wait a whole half year before the crop eventually grows up and it's time to harvest. But that harvest time does come. The cycle comes round. There is profit in the labour. And the more the labour, the more the profit. If you don't plough properly and allow your land to be full of weeds, then there will be less harvest. If you don't sow properly or don't sow at all, there will be no harvest. But it is not in you to make the plant grow. It is God who gives the increase, who makes the crop grow. And we benefit at the harvest. The alternative then idle chatter leads to poverty. It's easy to waste time talking about the weather or whatever else seeks our fancy and not be engaged in work. But we are to mind our own business. There is much that is said in the New Testament about the work that we do. And God has designed us that we should find satisfaction and fulfilment in our work. But of course, the commandment to remember the Sabbath day, there does need to be time for rest and God gives us time for rest. There needs to be time for God and God gives us time to draw near to him. For if we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. In all labour, there is profit, but idle chatter leads only to poverty.